It's been not quite a year since you sold to Amazon and certainly a crazy and unprecedented year at that. What's it been like being under the Amazon umbrella over the last few months? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. We really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, it's been great. Um, it's been about six months or so, and uh, our, mission is, our mission is intact. Uh, obviously, it's nice to not be fundraising out there. We're also learning a lot uh, from Amazon, so it's been really great. So you've been building these autonomous shuttles. We just saw uh, an image of it there. How many have you built? Are you testing them in the wild yet? Uh, we have built a little bit, uh, about um, a little over 10, and uh, we are testing them in a, in a private uh, facility that behaves like, uh, like public roads and also on, uh, on test tracks. So what is the vision here? The vision is really reimagining or reinventing personal transportation, making it uh, cleaner safer and more enjoyable for everyone. It's important to note that uh, our business model is that we don't sell you a vehicle, we sell you a ride. And we think that in dense urban environment, that makes a lot of sense. Yes, the technology, it's fully autonomous because you have an app and you say, I wanna go from point A to point B. Uh, the vehicle shows up, uh, sliding doors, you sit, uh, buckle up, you have your little screen that has your temperature, your route, as well as uh, your music. And then you arrive at your destination and uh, doors will unbuckle up first and then uh, step out and then we'll go pick up the new passengers. So we're constantly moving around. And when I'm not using it, somebody else is using it. So it's mobility on demand. It's just enabled by a fleet of fully um, electric an autonomous, uh, base, basically vehicle. And you don't have to worry about charging, maintenance, any of that. You just get the benefit of rides. So how far away from this becoming a reality? When might we see you launch a commercial service? Well, we, we are testing in San Francisco and in Las Vegas. So I think it's fair to assume that uh, we will be in those cities. Uh, what we like to say, we don't have any special or specific announcements at this point in time, but uh, it's not next year for sure, but it's also a lot sooner than people imagine. Uh, this is really a, an inflection point in, uh, in transportation. It's the beginning of the wave and it's something that's really going to change how cities are developed, how we move around, and it's gonna unlock a lot of opportunities. And so not next year, but uh, a lot sooner than people realize. And will you be delivering my Amazon packages? I mean, what's gonna be the relationship or will there be a connection to Amazon itself when that service launches? Well, the way we like to, to put it, as Morgan Stanley says, this is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity and people, uh, moving people is uh, the foundation for us. And we will concede that uh, once we're good and safe in terms of moving people and we know how to scale that, or we actually scale that, I think it's fair to assume that uh, we can move packages. So first we'll move you and then we'll move your packages a bit later. <laughs> All right. Um, well, it is International Women's Day, and you have been breaking barriers in a white male-dominated industry for a long time now. I'm curious how important you think it is to have diverse perspectives in the room when you're building a company and a product as important as a self-driving car. Oh, I think that, first of all, it's important in all industries. I mean, we do, women do represent half the population, meaning half the customers, half the consumers. And so it's important. Diversity of thought uh, and being inquisitive is one of the most important things. It makes the product better. Uh, we were just talking about this this morning. Uh, when I arrived at the company, um, about a month or six weeks in, we were having a discussion about pick up and drop off. And, you know, at work, pandemic notwithstanding, I'm in jeans and what have you. But occasionally, I like to go on the town like everybody else and put up, put my high heels on uh, for a dinner date or something. <laughs> I certainly don't want to be walking too far on those high heel shoes. But, you know, the truth is they hurt, at least for me. And so uh, just being in that room and having that conversation is key. And there are multiple examples. So if you want to be uh, there and provide value to your customers, one cannot ignore half the population. <laughs> Amen to that. If you can shorten the amount of time I have to wear high heels, but give me a chance to put them on, I'm all for it. Um, I, I'm curious how much time you have spent with Jeff Bezos and what 
kind of a leash, how long a leash he's giving you in terms of additional funding, like what could be coming up, uh, com coming down the pike? I mean, you are still an independently operated company. Could we see an IPO? <laughs> All right, so lots of questions in there. Look, uh, we spent a reasonable amount of time with the uh, leadership at Amazon. They've been very helpful. I don't know about a leash. That's not really the basis of our relationship. Uh, as you know, Amazon is one of the few uh, US high tech companies that has been able to uh, create value uh, via multiple business, multi-billion dollar businesses that are both adjacent and orthogonal. They are bold, they are visionary. We're learning a lot from them. And so needless to say, I'm enjoying not having to fundraise uh, on the open market anymore. And uh, we have the capital required to, uh, to go forward.